plunged into crisis. The warning signs were there ten years earlier. Everyone saw them. America is addicted to oil, which is often imported from unstable parts of the world. With demand for oil soaring and booming China and India, Saudi Arabia is set to turn off the taps to the West, sparking an oil shock. We haven't moved. The price has. I think most people don't accept what's going to hit us. Most people don't accept that this is a real possibility, and they don't accept the consequences of it. The age of oil is coming to an end. We can't take anything for granted anymore. When you talk to Americans, it nearly feels like the average person on the street thinks it's their God-given right to fill up with petrol. So now the race is on to the ends of the earth in a desperate search for black gold. They think this is the next giant oil field. No, they don't. They think this is the last giant oil field. These are desperate men. Oil rigs are full of desperate men. This well is costing us $36 million. Which is why I want to hit the target. But what if the oil isn't out there anymore? What then? Crisis deepens as Saudi Arabia says the West shouldn't take its oil for granted. Petrol station queues look set to stay as the Saudi oil minister today refused to increase oil exports to Europe and the United States. It's not our job to service the SUVs of America, he said at a meeting of OPEC ministers in Vienna. When do we need to go? Now. What took you so long, Nick? Calculating the wave power you generated when you washed your feet? I felt dirty, Jess. Didn't look it. The news has sent crude prices up by a further $5 to $95 a barrel. On the current course of the way we're developing our society in the United States and Europe and the rest of the world, we have an addiction for oil that can't stop. Analysts predict prices of over $100 a barrel in the next week, the highest oil price in history. And the minute we have an unpleasant supply disruption, we're going to have a crisis. A future oil shock, like the one from Saudi Arabia, will produce very, very difficult policy dilemmas for governments. What it means to the world is that consuming countries throughout the world will be unable to get the oil they need to service their economies. If it's a severe oil shock, you might actually see panic buying happening straight away. People filling up their cars because they're worried that oil within a few weeks would actually run out at petrol stations. What's happening? The road's gone all wavy. What has it? Nick, pull over. The power's gone. Why has it? It's 20 past 7. We've run out of petrol. We're supposed to be there in 10 minutes. We'll ring Mona and tell her we'll be late. It's a surprise. I can't ring and tell her we're going to be late for a party she knows nothing about. It'll be another surprise. I'm only us being late. We were supposed to get some fuel. I know. Oh, why didn't you? Because every garage I passed yesterday, I queued down the street and I was late. Where's the petrol? Can't. Jess!
Jess, I thought there was enough petrol for tonight. What if we'd run out this afternoon when I was on my own? I, I didn't know you were going anywhere. I had an appointment at the oil company. You didn't say? Alan rang. The U.S. federal government has finally given them a license to drill a wildcat oil well in Alaska. The Arctic Wildlife Refuge. They've studied all the data and... They're gonna use my prospect. What about us? I've studied the evolution of the basin. It's my field work. It's my well. And no one else has a say. We agreed that I would give up work. We agreed that I would go through IVF treatment after IVF treatment, and I've done it for a year and a half. And where has it got us? You don't have to go to Alaska. Just for a few months. I can't carry on not working, not being pregnant, not, not living my life. This isn't where I want to be, Nick. The Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, or ANWR as it's often called, is for some people a touchstone for the search for new oil. It's really an untouched area of natural beauty in a very remote corner of Alaska. This is a classic case where the desire for environmental preservation and the search for oil come into conflict. So actually allowing it to be opened up and be drilled is in effect admitting that America has got a, a serious problem and wants to lower its dependence on foreign oil by any means whatsoever. In an oil shock, our lives will change. Typically what happens when the oil price goes up rapidly is that, especially coming up to a high demand period, such as the winter, many areas like Minneapolis have to survive off heating oil. And the heating oil gets priced off the oil price. So if the oil price is doubling, then your heating oil for that winter is doubling. And this is typically a huge shock for people because they've been used to a winter bill which is maybe a few hundred dollars, and then it effectively goes up to a thousand dollars per month. You got a new car, huh? Yep. Filled it up yesterday? You bet I did. Three dollars fifty at the station on Cleveland Road this morning. The person wants to drive his car, he'll find a way. You'd be wishing you bought a bicycle. How much is this gonna cost you? 400 gallon tank? 1,300, 1,400. It cost me a grand last spring. They should have called us in early fall. It's cheaper then. Snow at the end of the week. They can have us building our own coffins next. Yeah, I reckon we already are. Just don't expect the Saudis to put gas in the hearse. See it. I think people today are only starting to really accept the fact that their basic lives in terms of their ability to get around, their ability to heat their homes, the fact that they have a job, depend on stable geopolitics in major oil producers. But there's only one global oil market and we all live in it. In 2016, oil companies are gonna be under tremendous pressure to continue to find enough oil to replace the oil they're taking out of the ground each day. In order to be sustainable, an oil company needs to every day find at least as much oil as it produces. And that's becoming harder and harder, as more and more major areas become depleted. Ah. Thanks, Jess. Okay, so. This is where we're drilling, area 1002, the Marsh Creek anticline of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. It's been a known oil and gas province for a long time, but it's also environmentally sensitive. There's been heavy opposition to drilling.